This evening, fatal accident on East Coast kills two persons. Fire on Lombard Street leaves dozens homeless. Abandoned float continue to litter the streets of Georgetown. Laborer in Burby is found dead after alleged failed attack on wife. In the region, UI and Reparation Committee talk Venezuela crisis. And internationally, series of tornadoes hammer Alabama. Greetings, star viewers in Guyana and around the world. Today is Monday, March 4th, 2019, and this edition of Headline News is now being streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. Mere days after the Guyana police force engaged in a large crackdown on errant minibus drivers, two persons were killed and five injured in a horrific accident on the Sussex Public Road. More from Esther Sobers. Skid marks and shattered glass are all that remains after Sunday's fatal accident on the Success Public Road, East Coast Denraro. Dead are 59-year-old Patricia Ellis of Haslington, East Coast Denraro, and 58-year-old Dennis Cully of Vigilance, East Coast Denraro. According to reports, Ellis and Cully were among several passengers in a Route 44 minibus. Police said that sometime around 7.30 hours, the minibus was observed speeding west along the southern drive lane of the southern carriageway. It is alleged that another driver attempted to undertake the minibus and struck its left rear wheel, causing the bus to lose control and slam into the medium. Collie was flung out of the bus window while the bus flipped several times before landing on her body. The minibus then skid for some distance before coming to a halt. Ellis died while receiving treatment at the Georgetown Area Hospital, while Collie, a vendor and a mother of three, died on the spot. It is also understood that one of the victims, a teenager, had to have his severely damaged fingers amputated. The 47-year-old minibus driver of Golden Grove, East Coast Zanarara, has since been arrested and is assisting with the investigation. He was tested for alcohol and was found negative. For Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. The Ministry of Public Health has established a visual inspection with acetic acid or VIA clinic at the Anna Regina Health Center, Pamaroon Supernow, Region 2. At the opening ceremony, Minister of Public Health, Warla Lawrence, encouraged women in Region 2 to take advantage of the services. She explained the importance of the VIA clinic, quote, in concrete terms, we are targeting some 5,735 women, Minister Lawrence said, adding that we at the Ministry of Public Health are not doing things in abstract. We are working to find that approximately 6,000 women in your region. We are looking for them. We want to reach you and address the issue and to stop it from happening. She added that in Guyana, there are approximately 103,335 women within the age range for the VIA exam at risk for cervical cancer. Doctors recommend that women between the ages of 25 to 49 years of age should undergo the VIA exam as they are the ones most at risk for developing cervical cancer. The 40-some odd families residing in the Lombard Street squatting area have never had it easy in life. Now, after a fire completely destroyed what little they had, these several dozen persons are now trying to pick up the pieces of what is left. Here is Wendell Jeffrey with their story. It was a case of old house upon old house last Saturday morning when some six families lost everything they owned due to a blaze at the squatting area on Lambert Street. Unconfirmed reports written Channel 2 Headline News is that the fire started when a young man, believed to be of an unsound mind and in a fit of rage, set his mother's house alight. When Channel 2 Headline News visited the scene yesterday, we heard music and we saw children playing right atop the still smoldering debris. We spoke with some of the residents, one of them who gave her name only as Sinti, told us that they were promised clothing, food and some way to sleep. 
but as yet, none of those things have materialized. Who knows where for we sleep last night? Who knows how we cope? We bed burn up, we had no roof. If you don't no family in the yard now, what would happen? Cynthia said that while her home was saved, it suffered significant damages as she lost several household items. She said that she was speaking on behalf of those who needed help. Right now, assistance to other families at their piece. house are on the ground. Flat would be very much appreciated, even if it's monetary or even if it's something to warn their back. Assisting the family that houses is flat on the ground, that's most important. I am badly damaged, but I still got something I could go in. What happened to them when they're flat on the ground? Cynthia said that the government's relocation plan might not be sufficient. Yes, so then when they come, they say the same thing. They're going to try to assist us so we can get something to eat, something to wear, and something over we had for last night. What happens for tonight? What can happen for the rest of the time? They want to relocate me and I know them in doing that. Maybe they got to do something right now. Say in the papers today that how they said they promised they're going to relocate me and right now they're only doing it for 20 families. What can happen to the other 23? It's for the three families in the yard. And then when the government comes to the yard, if they're only looking after 20 families right now, what's going to happen to the other 20? Several persons and charitable organizations have begun reaching out to that community by supplying them with foodstuff, clothing, and financial contributions, including the newly formed Fazel Faroz Family Foundation and also the Practical Christianity Ministries. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, laborer in Burby is found dead after alleged failed attack on white and abandoned flows continue to litter the streets of Georgetown. But first, here today's foreign currency exchange rates. For the latest in news from Guyana, the region, and beyond, visit our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. Activate the GTT Fab 5 plan today. For only 5,005, you get free unlimited calls to four of your closest family and friends, five gigs of data plus 250 text messages, and your Fab 5 friends can call you for free. GTT Fab 5. This place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231 
5554 or 225 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always is Ride Taxi Service. Let's go. Hours after being released from police custody, a laborer in Burbies was found dead in a suspected suicide. Esther Sober tells us more in this report. Over the weekend, Vimal Balkesun, a laborer from quarantine Burbies, was found dead in his home as an apparent suicide. According to reports, 37-year-old Balkesun was released just a few hours from police custody. Just a few hours earlier, he was arrested for allegedly choking, beating, and threatening to kill his wife, 33-year-old Christina Drapal. According to reports, after Balkesun was released from police custody on March 2nd, he returned home just after midnight and attacked his sleeping wife by choking her. The woman managed to free herself from his grip and ran to her mother's house, which is in the same yard. It is believed that he chose to take his own life after the failed murder attempt as he was discovered hanging by a rope from his veranda. Balkisun's body is currently at the Port Morant Hospital, while his wife is in a stable condition. For Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. A businessman from Samaru Dam, Paul Ryan, West Bank de Marara, who allegedly threatened a butcher on Sunday, was apprehended in his motor car in the vicinity of Raiden Ho Police Station. A search of the vehicle revealed an unlicensed pistol with eight live rounds. The suspect is being processed for court. Since 2016, the Mayor and City Council's Solid Waste Department has made consistent efforts to clean up the capital city after national holiday celebrations. Tonight, Wendell Jeffrey brings our attention to another, yet often ignored, form of refuse littering in the streets after MASH. There seems to be a growing trend that after the Mashamani celebrations, some of the float participants simply walk out of their floats and leave them anywhere. Channel 2 headline news noticed that along the home stretch avenue carriageway, in front of the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall and in the Jubilee Park, there were some floats that were just left there indiscriminately. Our investigations confirm that one of the floats belongs to the Guyana Trans Organization a non-profit organization that represents members of the lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender, and questioning community. One of the other floats belong to the Ministry of Culture, Youth, and Sport. Attempts to reach those organizations over the weekend proved futile. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, UE and Reparation Committee talks Venezuela crisis and series of tornadoes hammer Alabama. But before that, here's this week's first retraction schedule. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, once a dinner, I had a hard day. 
I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Right? No, no, no. Because all this time and money I waste on a cause alone can just send up my blood pressure. You've come to the right place. Really? Once you're switched over with our network, you can activate our Fab Five plan. With our Fab Five plan, you can enjoy free unlimited calls with four family and friends. You got to be kidding me. You will also get five gigabytes of data with 250 text messages. You got to be kidding me! And your chosen four can also call you for free. You got to be kidding me! Activate the GTT Fab 5 plan today. For only 5,005, you get free unlimited calls to four of your closest family and friends, five gigs of data plus 250 text messages, and your Fab 5 friends can call you for free. GTT Fab 5. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news from the region. Last week, the University of the West Indies opened campus St. Lucia, focused on the crisis in Venezuela for its February public forum, entitled Venezuela at the Crossroads, a public forum on the crisis in Venezuela. It brought together a distinguished panel that included a foreign affairs expert and a diplomat. HTS News Force Gina Filippi reports. Venezuela's major political crisis and growing row over the country's leader has garnered international attention. The dispute has seen violent protests and millions fleeing the country over the lack of basic essentials. On Thursday, UE Open Campus St. Lucia collaborated with the St. Lucia National Reparations Committee to hold discussion with members of society and citizens on how the ongoing crisis may affect Caribbean islands. We must contemplate the very serious situation facing a regional neighbor that is mere minutes away from our southern CARICOM countries. But we're talking geography, history, as well as economic circumstances which dictate that the challenges facing Venezuela affect all of us in this region in one way or another. And closing our eyes to the situation is definitely not an option. Former Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and former Ambassador to the United Nations, Earl Huntley, provided his insight on the matter. He examined the role of the international community in the Venezuelan crisis. The United States, um, Russia, China, and I took a look at also at CARICOM, but I focused a lot on the role of the United States as what I call one of the contributors to the crisis in terms of the, the, the trying to bring down the um, Chavista re revolution in Venezuela from the time of President Chavez to now, so that they have contributed to to the crisis in Venezuela and that has been compounded by the fact that of the presence of Russia and China in Venezuela so that we in addition to the US own um, anti-socialist stance in Venezuela that is compounded by the fact that there's a rivalry between them and China and Russia um, for influence in Venezuela. Outgoing Venezuelan ambassador to St. Lucia, Her Excellency Life Escalona, says her government and other world leaders are striving towards restoring peace in the country. 
different countries of our region are supporting the United States, like Colombia, and uh, but in our in our particular case, Venezuelans and the government of, of Venezuela, we are working together in terms to prevent any attacks, any military invasion and we have to maintain our sovereignty, we have to defend our sovereignty, we have to maintain our people free from any um, attacks from foreign. On Friday, the U.S. Treasury Department issued sanctions against Venezuela after deadly violence blocked humanitarian aid from reaching the country. However, President Maduro denies there's a humanitarian crisis and says the U.S.-led relief effort is part of a plan to remove his government from office. Gina Filippi, HCS News Force. And in international news, at least 23 people have been killed when a series of tornadoes hit the state of Alabama. Rescue teams are searching the wreckage of homes and businesses destroyed in the Lee County. It is feared that the number of fatalities could rise. Al Jazeera's Dorsa Jababri reports. This is what is left of Lee County in eastern Alabama after several tornadoes struck on Sunday. The U.S. National Weather Service says the first tornado packed winds of up to 266 kilometers an hour, carving a path at least a kilometer wide. People tried to leave the area before the tornadoes hit. I got in the car with four of my kids and then my wife left with two more. Uh, going to my mother-in-law's, we were just trying to get out of this area right here. Coming up around the corner as I was making a left right up there around 38. And this whole area right here is, uh, is pretty much just gone. The scattered debris is hampering rescue efforts in certain areas. We've, we've done everything we feel like we can do this evening. Uh, the area is just very, very hazardous to put anybody into at this point in time. Uh, debris everywhere, and it's just, a, as, as mentioned previously uh, this evening, just some mass damage to structures and residences uh, in the area. Catastrophic is the word being used by many to describe what's happened here. More than 10,000 people are without power across the state of Alabama. Cold weather is forecast for the area after the tornadoes, with temperatures predicted to drop to near freezing. The state governor has warned people there could be more extreme weather to come, and there are tornado warnings still in place in parts of Alabama and the neighboring state of Georgia. Dorsa Jabari, Al Jazeera. Here's a 3D weather forecast. And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast and Tuesday evening at 7 for more news. For now, I am Baby Baca signing out from your newscasting. Thank you for staying tuned and to have a blessed evening.